Salve te discipuli. Welcome back to Latin and we're going to wind it up today. Uh, we're going to be doing the blue book right here, chapters 34 right up to chapter 47. Okay, we're going to start off with a subjunctive mood, a major element, a major item in your Latin 2 course. First of all, let me talk, what is the subjunctive mood? Well, we always start from what we know. We've had two moods so far. We've had the indicative mood, and I hope you can see this, indicative mood, and this is the mood of fact. This is when you state something that actually occurred, which is what we've been doing since August in Latin 1. It is raining. The girl walks home. The mother saw her daughter at the fountain. These are all indicative statements. We've also had the imperative mood where you tell people what to do. So that's a command. Nothing hard about that. We covered that, I think, in one lesson. Uh, you just tell people, do this, do that. Sit down, stand up, go, come, whatever. So th we've had these two moods, the indicative mood and the imperative mood. All of these forms are covered in the back of your book. Today we're going to take our last mood here, uh, the subjunctive mood. And the subjunctive mood is just the opposite of the indicative mood. The indicative mood is the mood of fact, the mood of what actually happens, the declarative mood, as we call it in English, declarative sentences. The subjunctive mood is the mood of wishing. I'm going to put several indicators here, several predicates. It's the mood of the hypothetical, something you suppose hypothetical, what would happen if. It's conditional. I just said if. It's a conditional mood. It's anticipatory. It hasn't happened yet. And that's the reason there is no future tense in the subjunctive mood. The subjunctive mood is comprised of four tenses, the present, the imperfect, the perfect, and pluperfect. And in a few moments, I'm going to go over what that all looks like. But this is the mood of wishing. It's the mood of blessing. May you this and may you that. May the sun rise upon you. It's the mood of cursing, too. You know, may your camels die tomorrow. Romans love to curse their enemies or their competitors. They even put curse tablets on in, in the uh, roadways where horses were racing so they might win. So it's this kind of mood. It, it's, it's conditional. It's hypothetical. It's probable. It's maybe. And do we have this in English? We sure do. All languages, all Indo-European languages have this subjunctive mood. In English, we say would. I would come if it weren't raining. Uh, I would eat that if I weren't allergic to it. Could. Should, would. Should. Not so much could. Okay, let's put should in here. I should go, but I don't think I will. I don't feel like it. Um, should, would, may, I may go, might, I might go. These are all helping verbs which make, which make a subjunctive mood in English. Uh, Latin also includes if and a, a, a lot of other indirect questions. For example, I don't know what you are doing, that what you are doing would go in the subjunctive. The Romans love the subjunctive much more than we do. And you're going to find out that the Romans use the subjunctive in a lot more instances than we use <coughs> excuse me than we use the subjunctive what i'm going to do today folks is cover the entire subjunctive in this one lesson actually it goes into several chapters and i will mention those chapters after i finish my explanation of exactly what chapters i covered in this explanation here so that's just an overview right now of what the subjunctive is all about what is it what is it used for okay let me erase this here and show you the, how the subjunctive is formed. And then once you see the forms of the subjunctive, we'll go back to the uses of the subjunctive and a few uh, idiosyncrasies that, the, that Latin has that English doesn't, for example, like the sequence of tenses. OK. If you want to follow along with what I'm doing right now, you can turn to pages 198, and that's the active subjunctive, and page 200 in your book here, which is the passive subjunctive. Remember, we're only dealing with four tenses. There is no future or future perfect because the subjunctive mood 
hasn't happened yet. If remember, it's the mood of possibility. It's not the mood of fact, so future really doesn't belong in this. You do have present, you do have imperfect, <laughs> excuse me, you have perfect and pluperfect, subjunctive, active and passive. So let's do the present active and passive. And you can just sort of keep your hand in the back of your book, page 198 and page 200. Okay, I'm going to give you a little memory device, which I hope you enjoy. Clem steams clams in Miami, right here. And I'm going to put first conjugation here. I'm going to put second conjugation here. I'm going to put third conjugation here, and I'm going to put fourth conjugation under Miami. And I'm going to switch to the red ink now. I hope you can see this in the contrast. Okay, Clem, this is, this, we're talking right now about the present subjunctive. Present subjunctive, that's what I'm writing up here in case you can't see that. We're going to do active and passive. These are the vowel changes from the indicative that you're going to make for the present subjunctive. All right. So, we're concerned right here. Let me, let me try a, a brighter color here. Let me try maybe a purple. That red doesn't look too impressive to me. Okay. I'm going to circle this E here. It's, it could be a blue. E A here, A here, and I A here in Miami. Now you could say Siam too if you want. Clem steams, clams and Siam. We're not worried about the final I here in Miami, forget that. So, the first conjugation has an E in it. The second conjugation has EA. The third conjugation has an A. And the fourth conjugation has IA. The next thing I have to remember are my personal endings, which are the same as the active here. M or O, S, T. In this case, you want M. Mus, Tis. And NT. These are the personal endings. I'm just going to abbreviate here for the active voice when the subject is doing the action. <clears throat> then the passive voice, I know I'm in your way and I'll be out of your way in a second, is going to be our RIS tour more many and enter. Forgive my writing, but we've seen these before. Or over here. Over here, is the cameraman following me? I think he is. Is he doing a close-up when I point to things? I hope so. Now, so you have personal endings here. M, S, T, mus, tis, N, T, R, ris, tor, mor, mini, un, tor. And we simply stick those onto the stem and vowel combinations that we all have over here. Same as we did for the, the indicative mood. No problem whatsoever. Same thing. Now let's see what, if it's the same. Let me go back to uh, some black here so you can see very definitely what's going on. Okay, I'm going to use our old friend Amo, Amare, Amawi, Amatus and make the present subjunctive I may love, you may love, he may love. Okay, so I'm going to go Amem, Amez. I think in your book they use Parem, Pares, Paret for, from Paro, Parari. Amet. Amemus, Ametis, and Amet. See the E going down through your Clem? I may love, you may love, he may love, we may love, y'all may love, they may love. This is subjunctive now. The indicative, indicative was Amo, Amas, Amat, Amamas, Amatis, Amat. So you see the difference? It's all a matter of the vowel change. By the way, the present tense is the hardest one. From, from here on in, it gets easier and easier. If you know this, you've got it made. Okay, let's take moniam, I warn. Moniam, moneas, moneat, moneamus, moneatis, and Moniat, you can follow this in your book on page 198. Has it all there. See the EA combination? Now in the indicative, that was simply an E. Moneo, Mones, Monet, Monamus, Monetus, Monet. Here we have an EA to make it I may warn, you may warn, he may warn. So this is the second conjugation, present subjunctive, active. See our active personal endings here? We're going to do the passive in just a minute. Are you getting this? You see this on page 198? 
Then third conjugation, let's take rego. Regom. Looks like the future, doesn't it? Regas. Regat. But you won't confuse it with the future because there is no future subjunctive to get it confused with. Regamus. Regatis. And regant. I may rule, you may rule, he may rule, we may rule, y'all may rule, they may rule. Present subjunctive, third conjugation, active, and this, as I said, present tense. Fourth conjugation, again, look at page 198. I think they use audio, audire, audiwi, auditum there. And so we want audiam. See the Miami in there? The IA? Audias. Audiat. And I know I'm in your way. Audiamus. Audiatis and audiant. Okay, there's the present tense, all four conjugations. Let me get out of your way, and the cameraman can sort of zoom in on there. And if you look on page 198, you can see that it follows the same vowel combinations, even though if it's a different verb, like they use paro for, for the first. And I think they use habio for the second. Maybe habio, maybe monio. I'm pretty sure they use regam for the third and audiam for the fourth. So there you see the active voice. And we translate the present tense, I may. I may. I may love whatever. It hasn't happened yet. I may love, but I'm not doing it now. That's the whole gist of the subjunctive. You can also translate it, let me love. Let me love. That's encourage. I haven't done it yet, but let me. Okay. Let me warn you. Let me rule you. Let me hear you. May, uh, uh, th this is let, let us. Uh, in, the, in the Catholic Mass, in the Latin Mass, oh, let us pray, oremus, instead of oramus. Uh, oramus is we pray. Oremus means let us pray. So you see that laboremus, let us work. We may work, let us work. So it, there's different main clause translations for this subjunctive, and we're going to get into translating the subjunctive and how it works. But right now we're interested in how does, how does the form of the subjunctive, what does it look like in Latin? Now, how do we form the passive? Very simple, folks. We just take the MST, must go to page 200 for this. MST, there they are. MST, must, I'll just do this on a couple so I don't waste your time. Uh, and I change it to R is tour. Not, not hard at all. Here's our passive R, RIS, Tour. This is just like a set of Lego toys here. More, you're just changing them. End tour. More mini end tour. Everyone see that? And I would do the same thing here. Our wrist tour. So I may be loved. You may be loved. Let him be loved. Ame tour. Let him be warned. Okay? So you would just take the M, S, T, mus, tis, N, T, take it off and put R, Ris, Tor, more mini and Tor. Those are your passive personal endings. You just switch hats and you've got the passive. Folks, this is all there is to the present subjunctive form. Remember, Clem steams clams in Miami and you will get the vowel changes for all four conjugations. This is the only time that you have differences in conjugations. When we get to the imperfect, perfect, and pluperfect, you'll see they all do the same thing. This is the hard part. Okay, now we're ready to go to the imperfect, active, and passive. Now this, is, uh, this whole process is several chapters in your blue book. I'm going to put it all in one presentation here so that you can get more organized about it. Okay, we'll, we'll leave these up here because it does affect it does affect the imperfect. So we're going to go the imperfect. Let me erase this. And let me erase present. And we're going to do the imperfect subjunctive at this time. Imperfect. Probably we would say the imperfect subjunctive in English is might. Uh, present, I may love. Imperfect, I might love. Generally, it doesn't always come out like that in Latin. But generally, you can say that if you just have to absolutely translate it, uh, you would do that. Here's all you need to remember for the, for the imperfect subjunctive is the infinitive. Let's take, and you do this for any verb in Latin. Take the second principal part of the verb, which is its infinitive. 
write it out six times. I'm not going to do this for every conjugation because you do the same thing. And you know conjugate, uh, uh, tenses come in six packs. Amare, amare. Hope you can read my writing there. There I've written the infinitive, which I get from the second principal part of the verb. Amo amare, amawi amatum. Okay? And I'm going to take these right here, my active personal endings, and put them on the end. M, S, T, mus, tis, and N, T, and I've got my imperfect subjunctive, active voice. This is active. This is passive. Okay. So, I might love, you might love, he might love. We might love, y'all might love, they might love. Okay, if you need a translation, that's a good one. Now, how do we make this passive? I might be loved. Well, folks, we do the same thing that we did with the present. This is a pattern. That's why I want to teach these all at once so you can see the pattern. Now, that was page 198. Now, take your thumb from page 200 and flip over, and let's see what the passive looks like for any conjugation. Not just for the first. You're doing this for any conjugation. We're going to put... Our wrists, no, I'm noticing I'm following the blue line, the blue personal endings down here, passive. Tour, more, many, and tour. Got it? I might be loved, you might be loved, he might be loved, we might be loved, y'all might be loved, they might be loved. That's how you form the passive of any verb, any conjugation. There's no clums, teams, clams in Miami here. All right? This is even simpler. That's why I said if you learn the present tense, you got most of the hard part under your belt because it gets easier now. Can you think of anything easier? There it is. We all know the infinitive. It's the second principal part. We all know the personal endings, active and passive, or we should know them. And you just switch them. Put these for active, these for passive. You got it. Okay, that takes care of the imperfect. Let's go to the perfect. Perfect, active, perfect, passive. Okay, I'm going to erase all this, and I'm going to erase this, and I, folks, I don't need these anymore, so I'm going to erase my personal endings, because we're out of the present system. Now we're going into the perfect system, so we need a perfect stem. And you do this for any verb, regardless of conjugation. So when I do amare up here, it could be any verb in Latin. Now I need the perfect stem, amo, amare, amawi. Drop the I from Amawi, and I've got my perfect stem, A-M-A-V. And I'm going to write that out six times, because verbs comes in six packs. We said that a million times. This is we're doing the perfect subjunctive, active and passive. Amav, Amav, Amav. Okay? That's our stem, perfect stem. Now we need to make it subjunctive. I may have loved. If you want to do that that way, that's a good English translation. I may have loved. How do I do that? I do, I take the, uh, it looks going to look like the future perfect, arim, aris, arit, arimus, aritis, arint, e-r-i-n-t, excuse me, arint. Okay, and it looks like the future of the verb to be, more or less, is added to that. If you look at page 200, you should see the act, well, page 200 is the passive, page 198, there you see arim, eris, erit, erimus, eritus, erit. They put a hyphen in there, that's not part of the spelling. The book is simply trying to emphasize the... Uh, the ending part of the word, you don't put a hyphen in there when you're writing Latin. And of course, they don't do it in the stories in the book either. All right? Now, you do that to any verb. You take the perfect stem, which is, comes from the third principal part, and you add arim, eris, erit, erimus, eritus, errant. Okay? It looks like the future of the verb to be. Okay? It looks like the future of the verb to be. Now, there's the active. How do I make the passive? Well, go to the last principal part. Amo, amari, amawi, amatus. Perfect participle. Write amatus out six times. Amatus, amatus, amatus. 
and then come over here and make it plural because when you're in the plural, amati. And since it's an adjective, I'm assuming that I have a masculine subject. If this were feminine, these would be A's and these would be AE's over here. Okay. Now, as a second word, I'm going to put the subjunctive of the verb to be, which is sim, sis, sit, the present subjunctive of the verb to be, seamless, cetus, and sent. That is the present subjunctive of the verb to be. Sim, sis, sit, sima, si, to sin. That has to be memorized. And I mean that. <laughs> has to be memorized. Sim, sis, sit, sima, si, to sin. That is not only has to be memorized because of itself, I may be, sim, I may be sad, sim, tristis, but it's also used, as you know, to make the passive, perfect passive, of any verb here. So I would do this with any verb in the language. I would take the fourth principal part, the past participle, and use that for one word, and then the present subjunctive, use that for the other word. Okay? And that's our active and passive perfect subjunctive. We have one more to go, folks, and that's the pluperfect subjunctive. So let me just put the word plu right here. And I just need to change a couple of things. I'm going to leave the perfect stem there. Let me erase everything but the perfect stem. And I'm going to leave the past participle here and erase the present subjunctive of the verb to be. Now I'm ready to do the pluperfect. I might have loved. I might have been loved down here in the passive. Okay? Here we go. We're going to put the imperfect. Or, let me see. Oh, yes. It's going to look like the imperfect of the verb to be. But it's going to have an I rather than an E here. Ama wisem. Ama wises. Ama wiset. Ama was samos, ama was satis, ama was sent. And down here, I'm going to use the actual imperfect subjunctive of the verb to be, which is sm. Notice it, it follows the, uh, the rule. You take the infinitive, sum, esse, fui, futurum, esse, and that's the mst. So sm, esses, esset, esamos, as satis, and I'll get out of your way in a second. And if you look at page 200 and page 198, I have been faithful. They're using paro parare, I'm using amo amare here. Okay? So this is the pluperfect active and the pluperfect passive subjunctive of any verb. Right now, it's particularly it's amo. I, I might have love where we wouldn't even think of subjunctive. So it doesn't always have a subjunctive kind of translation in English. Uh, let me tell you this right now to cool your heels as you're ready to pull out your hair. Don't. Let the Romans use the subjunctive. You're not, at, at this stage in your Latin career, you are not ready to sit down and compose Latin sentences. That's called Latin prose composition, which is a very difficult college course. So right now, we, when you, we, we just want you to recognize the subjunctive when you see it and recognize the use of the subjunctive when you see it. That you can do. But don't say, oh, how am I going to, how am I going to translate, how, how am I going to make all this into subjunctive? You don't have to make it all into subjunctive. Simply recognize it as subjunctive and recognize the use it has in that subjunctive. Okay, know that that's subjunctive and not indicative. If this were indicative, of course, it would be entirely different. Amawiram, amawaras, amawarat here, and it would be amatus eram, amatus eras. Okay, down here. All right, and your indicative there is in the back of the book, right? Interlaced with the subjunctive. There's subjunctive on page, I think it's indicative on page uh, 199 and 201, it's something like that in the back of the book there, but they're all together. All right, so that's what the subjunctive mood looks like.